that we keep a clear, focused mind on Jesus and upon his word, that becomes the bedrock foundation for everything that we believe in and everything that we understand and how we can kind of try to look at the events unfolding around us with regard to what the Bible says will happen when the Bible says it will happen and what the players, what constitutes the players of this template of this coming beast kingdom. And let's, 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 let's just keep really focused, spirit filled minds and help people continue doing what they should be doing, which is getting into the ark of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ with everything else as second to that. Lord Jesus, we just come before you uh, affirming that you are the Holy One of Israel and that your word is truth and that we are sanctified by your truth. And we just pray that as many hearts as possible will repent of their sins, meaning they agree with you that they're the sin and they're the evil that God is going to destroy and punish, but not without God leaving one path one human being that's God, you, Jesus, as a last Adam to restart a new humanity that is forgiven, that loves you, Jesus, with all of their hearts, and that recognizes that you died for our sins by your death, burial, and resurrection so that we could become part of this new forever humanity and part of this eventual beautiful kingdom come that starts within that will be a thousand year reign a little later on. That your word details out the authentic kingdom and then eventually a kingdom that is without end forever and ever, wherein peace and righteousness, true shalom will reign and the chaos maker will be gone. And we certainly want to be people, Lord, that sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, as dear Mary did and Martha was busy doing this and that and this and that and uh, complained and said, Lord, am I supposed to do all the work? And she's just sitting there listening to you. And Jesus stood up for Mary's actions and said, this thing that she's doing is a good thing. And I'm not taking that away from her. And uh, so truly let us be people that prioritize all of the things that we do and all the things that we say and all the things that we think all the information that's coming at us because of the strange happenings is this lead up. Uh, let us be people of your word and with very precise, clear minds, knowing what our priorities are first and then uh, dividing well the word and not just running to whoever seems to be a trusted person but that really we divide very clearly and we pay attention to who could possibly be a change agent who is dividing scripture weird. So give us that, um, I hate to use the word enlightenment because the uh, new age has taken it over, but give us, give us a powerful understanding through the Holy Spirit, through the light of your word, the Holy Spirit being our light and just um, help us refine our thoughts and understanding in and through and by and with your word and then let everything else be put off to the side lord god as you help us to understand what is going on in these very unusual times lord god just give us wisdom and we just love you and, and um, praise you and thank you in jesus name amen Okay, so I am listening to his uh, live now stream is what it is called. And there are some things that he asserts here that I'm pretty well horrified. And again, if you have listened to other videos that I've done, I, I he has admitted to being what he says is a former Habbatist. And it is Habbat, I will remind you, that is... The group of people that have uh, Noahide sublaws on their uh, focus and the Sanhedrin and the 70 nations people are the Habbatist Jews. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But I just want to remind you that just because someone says I'm, I'm a former 
CIA, I'm a former Chabadist, does not necessarily mean that they are because the ninth command says that men can lie. And so one of the things that I do is as I look at his doctrine, basically for, for someone that claims to be a messianic Jew, I actually expect more of them than probably anybody else. And I expect them to know their scripture better than everybody else. And some of the things that he asserts, I find absolutely horrifying. And I want to let him speak. And then I want to focus on the strange things that he says and correct them. Because I'm not just going to let him say whatever and do whatever. And then he has this massive platform of people that trust him. They trust him unwaveringly. And I would just tell you that there is a massive disinformation campaign out there on so many levels, so many layers. And where I find my peace is in the Bible. And so I just want to be an ambassador of God that holds firm to the truth of God's word in a bevy of a lot of unrest right now and a lot of bad teaching that gets mixed in with some good teaching. Okay, and you have to divide, they have to divide that surgically with precision. And so we're going to do that today here. Coming. They're getting ready for this new world order. Agreed. And we know that. Agreed. And um, so a lot of things are going to be changing very rapidly. 5G, controlling of the population, uh, vaccines, all types of things are coming our way in the not so distant future. Vaccines that are going to be mandated and mandatory for adults. Okay. Mandatory for adults. So. Charlie, we will be talking about whether it's in this video or a video to come going into a little bit more about what is being projected with these mandatory vax uh, and looking into that. And then there's a lot of people that are postulating and saying that's the mark of the beast. And I would really caution you to not attach that title to everything, that it is a very specific time uh, released invention that the bible very clearly tells you happens after seven seals are deployed and seven trumpets are deployed so don't just grab on to anything that looks like it's a threat it may be a threat on some level and don't just immediately say that's it that's the mark of the beast there there is a uh, there are a lot of people out there that are sort of glomming onto that idea and uh, i would just caution you to read your Bible and to meditate very heavily on what is written in the text. And um, we will develop that theme in a little bit, but I, I, I want to continue hearing what he has to say here. Well, imagine that. Imagine having a vaccine that is mandatory for you as an adult. And I think there's over a hundred. This is actually already on the books that they're trying to get passed. Over, I think there's 140 different types inside of there. And Types of they what? end up microchipping you in the process. It's another concern. Um, everyone, both small and great, take that mark. Okay, so he's doing it too. He's doing it too. So is there a difference between a preemptive tagging you for tracking and a later after four Teen judgments in the middle of the tribulation where people are forced to become a new creation in the Antichrist, kind of an inverted gospel from hell. Yes, those are two different things. And we need to be very careful about that because we don't want people spinning off out of control saying that everything is the mark of the beast. When the mark of the beast comes, you'll know it. And it will be heads off for those that choose not to partake in this inverted, twisted, uh, counterfeit gospel with the abominable branch, uh, an abominable gospel, an abominable fake Holy Spirit by a technology, a yoking your humanity, your flesh, your clay with the iron of this technology. So let's just. Back off a little bit and cooler heads will prevail. Okay. And I see he's doing it too. 
and I have a big problem with him. I don't think he's a real born again Christian. I think he's incredibly intelligent. And I don't trust that man at all. But not just for that reason, for so many reasons. So remember, Mark of the Beast is three and a half years into the tribulation after 14 serious judgments. Do not listen to people that are trying to tell you that the Mark of the Beast is about ready to be forced on you right now, even if they do put some type of tracking inside you or that's the goal of that. Cooler heads prevail with the Bible open. Just think these things through. Don't, don't just listen to what someone tells you and then parrot it to no end. Go into the text. What is your scripture telling you? Your apostles that wrote the scripture through the Holy Spirit are not going to lead you astray. So that's kind of what this channel does. We go to the scripture. What does the scripture say? I don't care what your favorite YouTuber says. I don't care. I care what that black and white in my Bible says. And that's what this channel will do. We will go by what that black and white says in that Bible because I can trust John. I can trust Paul. I can trust Jesus Christ. This man and many others out there who may be in delusion, deception, they may not even be born again. <laughs> or they may be hardcore deceivers to confuse the masses. And you have to figure out who's who. You have to figure out who's the authentic. You have to figure out who doesn't know what in the world they're talking about. And they're just, they're deceived, but they don't know it. And you have to figure out who is the intentional big fat liar. That is what you have to decide. And you can't, you can't decide that when you're all up in a hizzy, right? And you're freaking out. You can't do that. You got to back it down. Calm it down. Listen but pour everything through your biblical worldview. Your, your Bible is the truth, not what you hear some trusted entity on YouTube telling you. Do you understand me? Now, I, I don't tell people what to do. I make suggestions. You go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. But this channel goes by the Bible and not the appearance of godliness. And I know right now, the battle is really beginning. There are ministers that are now speaking against what we've been telling you about this beast kingdom. Uh, you know, you have to go right against Jesus to, to go against that. And, and let me say this. I don't say that Israel is a beast kingdom. It's not Israel. It's not Israelis. It's not Jews. It is an elite group that identify themselves as the descendants of those Pharisees. And even in that group, even in that group, these are not all bad people either. Okay, I have such a problem with what he's saying here on so many levels. What he wants you to believe is that there is a small subset of Jews that are constituted as the beast kingdom that he believes are snake people. If you've listened to him for any length of time, he kind of has a weird, trippy serpent seed for certain Jews philosophy. And then he does work with the Gnostic Zen Garcia. And unfortunately, their little conference seems to have been postponed. Zen Garcia is not, and I mean not, a born-again Christian. And I would tell you that this man stepping up on a platform with him is also not a Christian and is a very savvy change agent. Now, we have a very different take, a very all-inclusive uh, take on what the beast kingdom is and who is a part of that. And we use the Bible to describe that. Now, what he wants you to believe is that there is a small subset of snake people that are the Pharisees in Israel, and they are taking over through the Noahide. And he would tell you that long ago, he believed that it was Rome, but now Rome is out, 
right? Because Rome totally doesn't pose a threat at all, right? No. And that it is now just a certain group within Israel and, and it's just the leadership and it's just these bad gene uh, children of the devil physically, physically, who are taking over. Now, I want to remind you that when you have a lie, it can be extremely subtle. One little tiny deviation. And you can produce something that looks close to the truth, but isn't the truth. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to make a recipe for something and you screwed up and left one of the ingredients out. And you're like, well, I got nine out of ten ingredients in there and then I made it and then it tasted horrible. Um, that is what can happen spiritually when you have these people who have been placed in positions of influence throughout YouTube world, like this man and his wife, whom I don't trust, and they give you subterfuge. Now, what's actually happening is that when you consider the bride of Jesus Christ, <coughs> there is an anti-bride of the Antichrist. So if you can understand that there's an authentic Jesus and then there's a counterfeit Jesus, then you can understand that as there is a true, actual, legitimate bride of Christ, there is also an anti-bride of Christ. And the people make up the kingdom. And so you need to throw in the AI and the, the surveillance. You need to throw in the, the technology. You need to throw in everything from the, the masses on the top who are the leadership of this world and this earth down to them wanting to bring all of the people, every man, woman, and child into this kingdom of darkness. And they're going to call it the kingdom of God. It is an inversion a copycat inversion of everything that you see Christ do with his bride. She's globally, uh, she's, she's everywhere, right? And she's a remnant. But what you have happening is the whole earth is being collected into this big giant lie. And you can see all of this uh, stage being set. They talk about the stage being set. Well, they're they're moving things along very rapidly. So we're we're winding down. I was talking to my friend in an email and talking about how we're in wrap up phase. Okay. You're not in the tribulation right now. But you are watching the dominoes being set up for that coming event. And you have men like this guy trying to tell you that there's some pharisaical serpent people who are taking over the earth and that's the beast kingdom. And I would tell you that that is an utter and complete joke. It is all of these masons. This is their sincerely held religious beliefs. They worship a serpent God, Lucifer, right? Who's an angel, some type of beautiful reptilian-esque a uh, rotten angel, from what I understand, quite beautiful, the Nakash, and he wants to be like God, and he wants to destroy all of God's stuff, and he knows that his judgment is coming soon, and he is setting, you know, things up with these world leaders and these masons everywhere, and these various Jews within government. They are not serpent people. They are unbelievers. When God talks about vipers and you are the children of the devil, he's talking about unbelievers. And when you have unbelievers in governmental positions in the Sanhedrin is a religious government. That's what you need to understand. But Israel also has a political government. And so Mr. N, you know who that is, Mr. N. He has made the Talmud the law of the land. And that's been since, I think, 2009. I mean, a long time. Um, it's not just a small little cross-section of people. You have tons and tons and tons of rabbis that are all teaching Noahide sublaws. They're all teaching about a fake gospel in which it's group salvation. That's what we're talking about. But it's not just them. It's not just your world leaders of the Masons. It's not just your um, Israeli 
entities who are in unbelief, who have positions of power, and then it goes from the top and it trickles down to the masses and their yeshivas. And they're actually teaching the people, even the children in schools, that um, you know the Gentiles are not good. The Gentiles are going to become your slaves. The Gentiles are this and that and blah 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 and you know many other not nice things. And they really dig into their Talmud. So I would really encourage you to go look up famous quotes of the Talmud if you don't want to sit down and read the whole thing, uh, and really begin to understand their worldview. Begin to understand the worldview of people that worship the false god of this world. Okay. And start to understand the, the, the piece of the puzzle that comes into play when you're talking about Rome's coexist, when you're talking about this idea of the Abrahamic face initiative that we've done videos on and talked about. We've talked about the, the whore of Babylon being this all-inclusive, inverted, copycat, counterfeit, <laughs> church from hell that encompasses all of the world religions. And at the very top of that, you have the kingpin, you have this coming Messiah fake, who is not a Gentile. He's a Jew. He will be a Jew, but he will be a special Jew. He will be AI enhanced. He will be your prototype, your progenitor, your your abominable branch, read Isaiah 14, and he will be showcasing what it looks like to be this humanity 2.0, this transhuman entity. And they also, you know, put witchcraft in with that. So witchcraft, sorcery, plus technology, new humanity. That's what we're talking about. And everybody is expected to get into this for when that is appropriate for that kind of stuff to start. Right now, you're just kind of seeing the finishing touches, it feels like, in wrap-up phase. We're not in the tribulation right now, people, and they are not ready to issue the mark of the beast at this moment. Just relax. Let's get a handle on what the kingdom is and who it is. So we spent time talking about that. Uh, we have other videos as well going over this faking of the kingdom with NAR. Let me just direct you to a couple of videos real quick here. He's part of it. He's so part of it, I can't even tell you. Oh, that is not cool. Oh, that is so not cool. He's part of this. He's part of this. He's part of this. Um, you have Israel part of this, uh, who unbelievers, I'm not talking about Jews and belief. I'm fine with Jews and belief, but I, I need to tell you that there are, there are double agents that will come to you smiling, saying, I'm a messianic Jew. I love Jesus, but they actually are oriented with tikkun olam, with this other gospel, with this group salvation. See, they really need you. All of these people, all of these power players and governments um, directing in the UN and Noahide.org, and uh, in, 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 in churches in NAR churches, New Apostolic Reformation churches, in the Catholic Church, uh, all of these different organizations need you to come under their hand of direction and to get your group salvation. And, and you might go, well, now, wait a minute. When I read my Bible, I don't see a group salvation at all. And you'd be right. You see an interpersonal, each human heart that bends the knee to Christ and says, I'm evil and I don't want to be evil. I want, I want a sinless nature. Can I please have a sinless nature? And God goes, yep. And I would love to provide that to you through my, my blood. And I'm just giving you a quick little synopsis. I don't have to go through the whole thing, but the gospel is found in first Corinthians 15, one through four. And that's also, if you hit my about, um, button on my page, there's a scripture there about uh, Jesus being the only way. And, uh, the gospel is given to you then in first Corinthians 15. And then I would also tell you that this rebirth issue, the kingdom within the kingdom within 
is very important. And uh, he's he's willing to make you a new creation in Christ. But that happens through each soul that personally comes to him and repents of their sins, agrees with him that they're evil and wants to be his new creation. And he has many cells within that body and he's the head. So this is what scripture teaches you. But see, you have this counterfeit organization of all of these different world leaders. You have the political tie-in with the religious entities, and they are all pulling everybody into this group salvation, right? And they all have a part to play, all of these different people. Um, I was going to take you to my channel and show you a couple different um, videos, but and we'll do that in a minute. But do you want to watch this quick little? He did a, a minute and a half here. Pope Francis prays <laughs> to an idol to stop spiky ball syndrome. Mary worship. Okay. Prepare to be totally offended. What is that? Cool. Oh. Oh. That's disgusting. That is uh, Lucifer parading around pretending to be the queen of heaven. And just wait. Just wait until they strap in the, you know, Mother Earth. Mother Earth loves you. And they give her a voice by creating some kind of technological breakthrough that Jesus would tell you is the abomination of desolation. Watch for those developments. Well, I don't plan on being here to, uh, to see if I'm correct in this. But um, as they are drawing people's attention into these idols, breaking the second command, as they are orienting you to Mary worship, to Mother Earth worship, and then they got their little baby Jesus. Uh, you should also study what other religions have to say from a research perspective about, um, you know, Horus and that whole thing. Isis and Horus and blah, 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 all that kind of thing. Your Bible is warning you in uh, various scriptures about Babylon and a historic Babylon and the worship that they do to the queen of the heaven, queen of heaven. So that's what you're seeing here. This is really hard to take. Like my spirit inside is most unhappy right now uh, because this is the stuff of worshiping spirits, men, worshiping spirits and doing the exact opposite of what your Lord told you to do. The second command is a big deal. We don't keep commands to get saved. Jesus kept the commands to help us get saved, to, to, to not just help us, but to get us saved. But once you get saved, then, yeah, you imitate Paul as he imitates Christ and you start walking in your sanctification. And the Ten Commands are, I like to look at them as like the safety rails that keep you safe. And Paul said the law is good. So once you get saved, yeah, yeah, the first command, worship no other gods before me, that's that's a big one, right? And the second command, just like it, have no uh, idols that you fashion because God is not made. God is the maker. God is not made. And they're, 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 they're drawing you into a coming deception where they're going to make this abomination of desolation. They're going to make this spirit plus technology uh, mother thing instead of Father God, and she's going to have her Antichrist son, a Jew, a Jewish imposter, and then they're going to have this, at that time, later on down the road, you can count off all 14 judgments, 
they will have a fake Holy Spirit via the technology to put inside your temple while they're in their temple in Israel. Israel wants that temple. The whole world wants that temple. There's so much pressuring going on with this spiky ball syndrome to, to, to get you to start to understand that we all need to come together in this group salvation. And then we can get God, the God of our many understandings, of coexist. But really, what the Jews would tell you is the name Hashem to come underneath this new world order of uh, obedience, forced obedience, a peace by a force. And guess what? When you when you get this little uh, mark of the beast put into you, they'll tell you this this will assist you in being able to be holy and to keep the commands. I'm almost certain that's part of the game. Uh, and just remember, the people that do take that mark of the beast, remember, then they qualify for bowl number one. Grievous, nasty, smelly, pussy, gross, bloody, yuck-filled, boils all over your body. And this is the most extreme form of wrath at that point on that bowl. So your people will probably be horribly disfigured. Just go back to Exodus, right? They were covered in boils. This is going to be all these years later during the tribulation, the correction. It's not funny, but it's scary where they did not learn. And so now you're seeing typology being fulfilled in a greater context globally for this horrible woman, this horrible one world church, this horrible conglomerate of all those who would worship Satan in place of Yahweh or Yehovah or Jesus and insult the Holy Spirit and cut themselves off from any possible hope of, of, of rebirth and salvation in Christ for a counterfeit. That's what you have going on. And this is training to get you all to observe this and to see, see, we worship the idols. No, you shouldn't be doing that. This is disgusting. This is about as evil as it gets at this point here. Oh, my. Oh! Oh. Wow. So some some people will try to direct your attention and say that this whore is the Catholic Church. That's not the whole enchilada. That's just a big part of it. Then there will be people like Steve that will try to say, well, Israel, but only a certain subset of Israel is uh, what constitutes the whore. And certainly Israel's leadership and then whoever else partakes of that belief um, in this uh, group salvation and this trickery that's coming, uh, that's a part of it. But again, that's that's also not the whole enchilada. You're, you're missing a lot if you don't see them all band, banded together. Uh, NAR, NAR is a big piece of this puzzle. And they're constantly with, you know, we're going to bring the head of kingdom of heaven to earth. We're going to bring God to earth. Oh yeah. And we're gods and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, they're a huge piece of this and they're, they're calling it the kingdom of God, but it's really the beast kingdom. It is really a kingdom of darkness. It is a kingdom of evil. It is that final seven years of that 6,000 year long curse. And Satan will actually be trapped up on this planet from what we see in revelation 12. I think that's like verse seven through nine, somewhere around in there. And uh, it is that, you know, the, the last call, so to speak, of God's grace to mankind. Yes, being applied with judgment now, but he will still accept people to come to him and repent at that time. But it will it will cost you. It will cost you. If you didn't come in grace, you have that final seven years of wrath, hell on earth, all 21 judgments. 
even at the sixth seal early on, the people are crying out, oh no, hide us from the wrath of the lamb. They recognize the wrath all the way back in the sixth seal. And even getting the Antichrist is, you know, God going, here's, here's the wrath you wanted. But God is so kind that he even will be willing to save people during that time. But you've got to crawl over your unbelief. And that's, you got to crawl over this delusion that's coming. Uh, some people will point to America and go, that's Babylon. America's a part of it, but that also is not the whole enchilada. Um, you will have still others yet that will point to Islam and say, that's the horror. Uh, well, Islam is a part of it. You know, we're just putting all these little precepts together of all these organizations and you need to tie them together. And you need to understand it's a global rebellion. It's a global rebellion. But uh, they take all the best things that God's word has to offer, and then they just flip it on its head, like Isaiah 5.20 says. And so if you can understand an authentic and a counterfeit, then you can begin to understand a little bit better what is being talked about when you talk about the kingdom of darkness. You talk about the beast kingdom. You talk about this um, Babylon horror. You can kind of see the whole thing all together. It's all of those things and all the nations of the world. It's it's the people uh, sitting on the many waters of every tongue, tribe, people, and nation. Just like God's bride is of every tongue, people, tribe, and nation, praising God in glory. So do you have the reverse of that and counterfeit of that. And that is the way that Satan operates. Just read Second Corinthians 11, and he will explain it out to you, these counterfeits of everything. That's what's going on. Uh, people have you directing your attention off to one little puzzle piece, and then you might be missing the whole, the whole enchilada of evil together. And uh, they're, so if they're building it now, the Abrahamic Face Initiative, the uh, Continual pushing people into this coexist, and then everybody will go underneath Israel, and uh, you'll go underneath the Noahide court system and the Sanhedrin. If you can kind of understand that 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 is being formulated and heavily pushed in its creation now, March, I think today. What is today's date? I don't know. Uh, I think today is the 17th, and yesterday was the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. I can't look at my Hold on. Is it the 17th today? Like I think it is. Yep. Okay, fine. If you can understand that the, the horror is developing now, then that should be a really big clue to you when you go reading in Revelation 17 and then her environment that she lives in an 18 uh, that is destroyed by God's judgments and by allowing evil to just take its course and just destroy everything. But of course, God does have, um, he, he, he does have some plans uh, in there to stop the full bore extermination of humanity. And he has um, some people that he protects who end up being some Jews that repent. Yay! And uh, you'll have lots of, of uh, dead people that will have traded their temporal life for eternal life, which I highly recommend, highly recommend you start explaining to people the gospel now. And if they don't accept it now, you need to plant seeds in them so that they can understand uh, what they will need to do in the future to come and not to deny Jesus. That would be most unwise. But anyhow, I have lots of videos in here going over and helping to explain to people the counterfeit bride, this one world church. I have tons of videos. I don't want to go look at that article, but um, this would be a good one here. Dystopian World Court Peace Plan, Peace by Force, Noahide Sublaws by all 70 nations. 70 nations is a way of saying all of you together. And the Sanhedrin, Apostasy, Trojan Horse, all religions, one world church and game rival kingdoms a true one and a false one mm -hmm. uh so so many so many honestly all here all for free 
Babylon, the future of humanity in righteousness. Capitulating Christians, we are little gods. They are floating that idea to people. You're, you're a little god. Lance Walnow, NAR Apostolic Centers, a counterfeit heir, birthright, inheritance, remnant, and kingdom. Yes, you have a lot of power players that are on board with this whole NAR change agent leader uh, assisting Babylon, the one world church of all world religions. If you don't understand the paradigm shift of the global messianic family, uh, Tikkun International, Tikkun Olam, this other gospel, this group salvation, one world church, one world religion, and how Dr. Michael Brown, who says he's a messianic Jew, but he's totally working for the devil. You are not fully understanding it if you don't understand these things, friends. One world counterfeit global church, Babylon the whore, one world religion, and their seven mountain mandate. Religion is they're getting everybody on board. Uh, there are lots, lots and lots of videos. NAR's role to globally force the nation's religions into a Christian Universal Utopian Group Salvation. That's what we're talking about. Mystery Babylon. The Great Mother of All Horse. This is going to be the mother of all deceptions. When people say that, they mean like the greatest deception of all the deceptions ever. Like the mega deception coup de grande or whatever you want to call it. Like like El Grande. You know, Spanish people say El Grande. <laughs> uh the enchilada from hell, okay? The full bore satanic plot to have all the world's religions come together in the kingdom of God, but worshiping not Yahweh, no, not, not Yehovah, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit who made you and loves you. They all made you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No, no, not, not those entities, but doing it with that is the wrapper, so to speak. Uh, calling it the kingdom of God, using biblical uh, scripture and so on and so forth. It's a big giant lie is what I'm trying to articulate here. Uh, Nar danger, laying God's kingdom of darkness, counterfeit horror, one world church forming now, Revelation 17. 17 is a vignette. When you read Revelation, you need to understand that not everything is perfectly in order and that there uh, are certain chapters in there that are vignettes. Some people call them parenthetical, but I don't think that's a good way to explain it. I think saying a vignette is a much better way to explain it. And so when you get to 17, it doesn't necessarily mean that the horror is starting all the way at the end of the Bible because there's only 22 chapters in Revelation. Uh, so you can't necessarily go by the numbers and those were added much later to make sense of it all. But uh, if you can understand that you're seeing the horror forming now and later at that uh, those, those judgments and then particularly those last seven bulls being put down uh yeah destruction is coming for her and that whole environment uh one world religion reaching all the nations bringing them into salvation of israel equals the one world church so israel is the kingpin and then you have rome and coexist you have nar you have all of the religions of the world gathering together in this big giant lie and you have lots of aids uh, Kanye West, NAR people, Bethel, um, Olive Tree Views, uh, One World Religion, Faking the Kingdom, bonus material. This this is a pretty short one. You have so many people writing books. You have all these people saying that we need we need this new way of doing church. We need this new unity with everything all together. And they're all lying to you, telling you that, um, you know, God is going to flood this earth with judgment. And he is, but they're, they're trying to say that it's, um, if, if that's going to happen if you don't come together in unity, where in fact, uh, coming together in that unity, mixing good and evil together is what will bring you that, that major correction that's coming. So there's, in other words, there's a lot of game playing and lying going on. And there's just so many videos in here, counterfeit kingdom of a Jewish antichrist, media blackout. And lists of change agents denying Noahide. I mean, they, there's so much in here to help people understand where it's all going. NAR and the UN plan to lie and force all the world religions into the kingdom of God, one world religion. And he explains it to you. And he says that he's a Christian and he is working with the UN. 
and they really need you to believe that you can become a god. So those those are some sources that hopefully will be helpful to you if you decide that you want to look into them. And I want to look at this article and just see, is there anything else we need to know here? So this is subtle seeding that you need to become part of this unity because we're all going to get it if you don't become part of this unity. And then God won't like us anymore and he'll He'll uh, continue this plague until you're all dead. And then and then will you be happy because you got your own weight? Like that's, that's the feel of the manipulation that is being seeded to you through this visual wag the dog. Uh, presentation here. And and as I always say, <laughs> much, much more could be said. Pope Francis prayed to Mary to stop the, uh, to a special crucifix to stop spiky ball syndrome. According to the Vatican, Pope Francis left quarantine to walk out into the deserted streets of Rome and to venture into the Catholic Church of Babylon, part of it, to pray directly to the statue. <laughs> of the Virgin Mary and a special voodoo crucifix believed to have magical powers to stop plagues. That is witchcraft and worshiping spirits through false images. This is the highest level of witchcraft. It would appear to me. The Holy See Press Office issued the report saying this afternoon at about four, Pope Francis left the Vatican and made a private visit to the Basilica of St. Mary Major to offer a prayer, <laughs> not to the God of the universe, but to the fake, false apparition spirit uh, image of the Virgin Mary. I'm not going to try to pronounce that because I don't speak Italian where her icon is kept and venerated, totally breaking God's law. And then the Pope went on to pray, this is so demonic, to a special crucifix that was held by a procession to stop the plague in 1522. Inanimate objects can't stop anything. And I would tell you that this is a bastardization of the Torah when Moses, I have this on my wall actually, uh, it's a coloring page that my kid did, and I. it's a precursor to uh, the cross. And uh, remember, they had the serpent uh, on the, um, the stick thingy, so to speak, you know, the proper terminology, stick thingy. And the, the people had to look up in faith. That's all they had to do. They had been bit by serpents, and they were dying in droves. And Moses was like, God, what do I do? <laughs> and uh, God had him erect that. And all the people had to do in this little mini training wheel session of learning what faith looks like and, and doing actions in keeping with faith, they looked up. It's an act of the will when you place faith in what God tells you to as this precursor to the cross. And those who looked up in faith at that serpent stick thingy uh, were saved and the plague stopped. So they're kind of trying to redo that now with their own creepy crucifix. Christ is not on that thing anymore. He got off. He's all in heaven and stuff now. And uh, when you worship the object, that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, this is so evil. This is sorcery and witchcraft and uh, it's it's bad. Then after taking a walk around the Via del Corso, as if making a pilgrimage, he visited the church of San Marcello on the Corso, where a miraculous crucifix is housed. No, it's not. It's an object. In 1522, it was carried in the procession throughout the neighborhoods of the city so that the Great Plague might cease in Rome. In his prayer, the Babylonian evil bad guy, pleaded for an end to the pandemic that struck Italy and the world. He also implored the healing of many sick people, remembering the numerous victims of the past days, or that's what they want us to think, and asked their friends and family uh, that they might have, cons con how do you say that? Consolation and comfort. Reportedly, the Mary Idol, <laughs> the Mary Idol, our Lady Salas, whatever, I can't speak Italian, is one of his favorite, <laughs> hey, 
favorite inanimate objects to pray to, and he regularly stops in on special feast days to talk to the statue, to talk to the hunk of wood that's been painted, and women are not to have this, you know, massive, creepidocious position over men. And here you have the Pope, you know, cowering underneath her. And uh, look at all this ornate, you know, evil can look so beautiful on the outside, right? So he's just leading you into the evil. Right? One giant global rebellion. But he's only a part of it. He's only a part of it. There's, that's creepy. There's so much more. Most holy crucifix. <laughs> okay. I just want to grab this really quick. So this is all to educate you and to just to kind of get you to go with the flow. You need to go with the flow. You need to listen to your leaders. Uh, don't listen to your leaders. So that's only part of Babylon. You also have the very subtle pressuring of, you know, all of the world religions coming together. Let me show you uh, a picture of that. So we will try to mosey on back over to uh, Steve. <clears throat> but uh, when you think of the Babylonian horror, you should consider every person in rebellion and unbelief, including Israel, including all the nations of the world, including America, including our government. Trump is not a Christian. Uh, including just everybody who is not born again in Christ. So all the empty temples all coming together to worship the various forms of Lucifer and the spirits that they worship. That's the best understanding of what constitutes this horror. And so this is one more step forward. I'm over here at nowtheendbegins.com. A lot going on. Um, but right now, I think I just want to focus on this article, although there's honestly so many other things that we could talk about. And we'll do those in another video. But right now, I just want to focus on this. So Roman Catholics, evangelicals who are fake Christians, pagans, Muslims, and Buddhists gather at the Ring of Peace. The Ring of Peace. United Nations, One World Religion, Interfaith Ceremony in Germany. So when you... See this, for example, in this picture, all the world religions, all the nations coming under Noahide. That's their one piece, one, one people of Israel. You should understand it as, and I'm going to get you a picture of the war. Lots of artwork has been done. So, um, you know, you can see the people married together with the beast kingdom of technology. And it all goes together, a people and a kingdom. The people are part of the kingdom. And then you have the leaders that are part, you know, head over the kingdom. You have, I mean, it all goes together in a world system is what I'm trying to say. So this one's not bad. Now, remember, she gets all bloodthirsty, right? This is a pretty cool picture here to who's the whore of Babylon. That's a pretty famous picture as well. That's interesting. So anyhow, when you're looking at all of those people together in rebellion, you are looking at the whore of Babylon. You are looking at the one world church of evil with all the world religions together worshiping Lucifer, including the fake Christians. Does that make sense? The guiding light for the ecumenical extravaganza was the Ring of Peace. A 25-foot wooden ring-shaped sculpture was erected by the organizers to be a permanent multi-faith symbol of interfaith cooperation. According to the creators of the modern day idol, the ring is supposed to represent the wheel of Buddha. I don't know what that is. The ring of the prophet Muhammad. No, thank you. 
and the king and the ring of King Solomon and Lessing's ring parable, a story which equates different face as one. And see, that's so schizo because all of the differences that are within the different face make this one big giant schizophrenic nightmare that doesn't make sense because this is the counterfeit. Well, what do you have with the church? You have all of the cells of the different people within that one new body of Christ where Christ is the head, yet they are all doctrinally on the same page in the authentic. Let me show you a really cool picture. Hold on. That's not bad. I'll show you another one too. See, her dress was made up of all these different flags because the bride is, you know, true born again Christians filled with the Holy Spirit from all over the whole world. And I love how he is hugging her and they're, you know, in this joyful embrace, Christ and his his uh, bride who's going to become his wife. So I like that one. You should understand the whore of Babylon as that as well. The many within the one, but see, they're the counterfeit. This is the authentic, or at least a representation. Let me show you another picture. And this is also one of my other favorites. All throughout the New Testament, you have it explained that there are the many within the one. And so I really like how all the different little people's faces, it's kind of a weird image, but um, conceptually, this is a good visual to help you understand that uh, the symbol of the woman, the symbol of the, the bride who's going to be married to Christ, uh, not just the New Testament church, I would have you understand when everything is said and done, but really everybody that has ever trusted in the precepts of Yahweh to bring people to faith uh comprise this and that might kind of be an unusual notion for you but i would tell you that when you read everything cover to cover from genesis bear sheet down to uh revelation you begin to understand that christ has love for people all the way back in the old testament who have come and found grace in him and, and gone through faith uh and then also there's more who will be coming so you know when you kind of consider it all together uh, from God's vantage point, um, everything that loves him, that's in him, that will be together will be his, uh, wife to come. And I think probably in this picture, they are looking at, um, I'm just going to put it this way to keep it simple. Cause I don't want to confuse you or myself. <laughs> Jews and Gentiles in belief who have come through the blood, whether that was Old Testament or New Testament. And Christ, remember, when he comes, he's going to raise the dead and the living. And we know that from 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, I believe it is talking about it. And then 1 Corinthians 15, I think somewhere around chapter, I mean, verse 50, 51, 52, so, somewhere in there. All your classic, you know, rapture verses. So much more could be said about that. But um Really just keep a fine eye to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn talked about in Hebrews. Oh, is it 11, 12? I think it's chapter 12. Um, and just consider that it's all of humanity that wants to be in Christ. And then when the seven year period of time comes, when you see this counterfeit rival, there'll be lots of people that run to Jesus Christ. A lot of people will die for their faith and Christ will preserve uh, a a small group of Jews uh, for himself. I don't want to get into all that and burn up a lot of time with that, but suffice it to say that here you have the many within the one, and Paul goes into great lengths to explain that union of people that uh, gets into the one new mankind, okay? Whether they're Jew or Gentile, that's talked about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, uh, the new creation that is talked about in Ephesians 2, 15, and uh, so when you're dealing with symbols, it's really easy then to understand the many within the one. And I just wish that somebody would have ever done a picture of the whore of Babylon with the many within the one, but <clears throat> they have not. So when you see the whore of Babylon, you should understand. And this is just one picture of one gathering in Germany that, that represents this cross-section of all of these different religions. But and I would just tell you, so take that the world over. Okay, the world over. So that is the best understanding of the horror of Babylon. It's all of them that worship the spirits is a really simple way to put that. Okay, all faiths are intertwined and interlinked together. Not if you're truly in Jesus Christ. And this is an attempt to trap up those in real true faith born again in Jesus, who hold to Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father except through Jesus. John 14, 6. 
complementing each other and nurturing the same values that are also universal values that unite us as, look at this, oh, isn't that sweet? One big giant lie, one humanity and many cultures and many religions. Oh, you mean like the many within the one? But see, this is the lie. This is the counterfeit. This is the, 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 the group of people to whom the delusion of the transhumanism through the technology and whatever all that will look like in this 5G world, in this world of a computer crafted, I'm going to call it computer crafted uh, simulation that they want to make, wherein you get to enter this world and you get to be whatever you want. If you want to be a fake god in this world, whatever technology they're going to bring in and blend with real reality in this kingdom come, this, this AI hellhole that is to come, uh, that is the delusion. And these are the group of people. And uh, Christ, even through his judgment, it's so interesting to me that he extends to her an offer and says, come out of her, my people. Even that far advanced, he's so tender. But anyhow, this happened a little while back in September of 2019. Interesting. And somehow we missed it. But better late than never, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The official name of this annual gathering is called the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Religions, for Peace World Assembly. Hey, that's like one of my titles. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh... And it's centered around something called the Ring of Peace. The idea of the Ring of Peace is finding peace and harmony <laughs> between the world's religions so that they can work together to achieve their common goal of universal peace and safety and all outside of having the Prince of Peace. And thus, it's going to crash and burn. And that's exactly what happens in increments. Now, let me see. Where have we heard that before? Wait, I know. For when they say peace and safety, then shall sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of day. And we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And I'm not really going to have time to get into this. But when you see this woman in travail thing, that should immediately trigger for you Feast of Trumpets. That's a Feast of Trumpets thing. Uh, and Revelation 12, 5, that's also out of order in the Bible. He does that quite frequently. He sprinkles precepts here, there, and everywhere. And you have to put the puzzle pieces together quickly. So uh, not just quickly, but um, correctly, I meant to say. Um, much more could be said about that, but I will resist going down that rabbit trail because we were at an hour and two minutes now, and I want to wrap up with this article. And I don't know if I'll have a chance to get back into what Steve is saying, but uh, remember, he's giving you a very different summation of what the Babylonian Babylonian horror is that is not all-inclusive, and he is ignoring these huge chunks of information. And I don't think that Steve is an ignorant man. I think that Steve is a change agent man. Uh... And I can also put uh, his link in where you can go see that 18-minute video in its totality, I think maybe might be the best way to handle this. I do try to um, not make the longest videos ever. But for those who want to know truth, here you go. Uh, if it is religion you want, pick one, anyone. They're all just as good as the other, and they all take you to the same place. Yeah. Hell, yes. And the Bible tells us that in the days after the pre-tribulation rapture, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is seven years in length, that's what a heptad is, seven years, a man will arrive on the scene and he will bring a fake world peace and he'll do it through religion and through military effort. And that man being, of course, the Antichrist. Did not your Lord tell you this in Matthew 24? Did not your Lord say this in John 5 that I, you reject, but there'll be another that comes in his own name and him ye will receive? And they're, they're wetting the appetite of these people. And that's what this whole, I mean, there's probably lots of things to it, lots of goals to achieve with it. But the spiky ball syndrome, at least one aspect of it is to pressure you into this unity. Don't you want everything to calm down? Hmm? We can totally make that happen for you. 
But I would tell you that that unity is not worth getting into because it is a fake unity that will take you to hell for those who are not um, safe in the ark of Jesus Christ. Uh, here are some excellent remarks from the leader of that event, His Excellency. <laughs> uh, Miguel Angel Moratinos. I feel very privileged to be launching the sculpture, The Ring for Peace, a symbolic artwork that sheds light on the theme that is gathering all of us together in Landau, meaning peace be between religions. I think Dr. William Vedley, Secretary General ooh, of the Religions for Peace, for inviting me. I also think the federal government of Germany, okay, tilt, go back to your history, Germany. Mm, is that really trustworthy uh, group there? For organizing this important and timely meeting. Yesterday, I was very glad to meet with my good friend, President Frank Walter Steinmeier. Hmm, Steinmeier. I echo what he said in his opening remarks that we should all work for peace and respect. <laughs> I take the opportunity this moment and invite you to commit to fully this recommendation, work for peace and respect. And that word work, I'm not liking that at all because that's very tikkun olam. You know, work for your peace. Work to earn your place in the kingdom. Work uh, with the Noahide. One one thing that Steve will say is he will tell you that 20 nations, 20 um, states, 20 states in America have signed on to Noahide. And I don't know why he's telling you 20, and I don't really want to divert too much off of that article because I really do want to get back to that article. But I would tell you that uh, I don't know why he tells you 20 because I have a video going over and showing you uh, where you can go to see all of the pictures of the rabbis, all of the declarations on paper that all, and I mean all, 50 states in America have signed on to and agreed to education day. We're not talking 20, we're talking 50. In 2018, under President Trump, who is not a Christian, uh, under his leading, they have all signed on to it. So as you have spiky ball syndrome and all of the cacophony of whatever it is that they're doing with this pressuring and and um, this manufactured apostasy, this manufactured lie, this manufactured manipulation uh, on a global scale. Uh, and then also here in America, I would tell you that you should be very, very uncomfortable with knowing that all 50 states have signed on to and agreed to Noahide. And I don't know why he's telling you only 20 when in fact, I prove to you, beloved, that it is all 50. And that is in uh, one of the titles of the videos that I do. I will try to remember to put a link in if I can remember that. But uh, Rebbe, R-E-B-B-E dot -E org. They proudly display that. And all the pictures, all, every state, whatever state you're in. I'm in Washington. So Ensley is who my uh, turncoat dictator is that signed uh, basically people's death warrant for those who will be here for that. Uh, you could also stamp on his forehead, Babylonian whore, but only one of many, one of many. And so um, I think you could also stamp on his forehead, uh, Babylonian whore in hiding, playing with your mind and, and, and telling you incorrect things. It, don't say it's 20 when it's 50. And maybe he doesn't know, but where, what, what is his source that he's going off of to tell you 20 when it's 50? That kind of annoys me. But anyhow, mm -hmm. Moving on, moving on, going back to our article, hyper-focusing on this article. I, I'm not really one for brevity, but I want to give good information to people. Ugh. After all, all faiths are intertwined and interlinked together, complementing each other. No, not complementing, contradicting, contradicting each other and nurturing the same values that are also universal values that unite us as one humanity, Babylonian whore, and many cultures and many religions, Babylonian whore. This is the motto of UNAOC and it's, I don't know what that is. Is that German or something? I don't know what that is. Raisin de, it's, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm an English speaking girl that can't speak other languages, so that isn't going to happen. Yeah, I totally flunked out of Spanish when I was in high school. That just was not going to happen. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, this plan is a liber uh, uh, elaborated in 
What is this word? Con consonants? Consonants? Ooh, with Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which affirms the right to freedom of thought. No! Conscience and religion noting that this right includes the right of individuals and communities to manifest their religions and beliefs in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. No, this is like how 1984 has like, for example, the ministry of truth, but then it's, it's, it actually, the label is false and their deployment and uh, MO is to send out lies, right? So when they tell you that this is to form uh, the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, so that you can teach and practice and worship. That is only within their um, stiff definition that you must all believe that all paths lead to God, which for the born again Christian, we would say thank you and no thank you. And um, much more could be said about that. But see, they've even couched it in language that gives you a false sense of security. This is a lie. This is the hiss that you should understand. Do you hear the hiss? Do you smell the brimstone? Yes. It is conceived of as a, a, of an action-oriented framework, meaning you're all going to be on board or you're going to die. For action with suggested recommendations to support relevant stakeholders in their efforts to prevent possible mm, attacks against religious sites and enhance preparedness to safeguard religious sites and worshipers. Okay, you know what that makes me think of? So there was this whole thing, and we did a video on it, <laughs> where, you know, somebody came and they videotaped the, the, uh, the destruction of Pancho Mama. Uh, this pagan wood, creepy Mother Earth, creepy uh, Mary thing that the Pope had uh, went playing around with these uh, indigenous people. You know, please, more earth worshiping, spirit worshiping, pagan uh, people uh, as we all yoke together in the worshiping of the created instead of the creator, which God hates that stuff and talked about it in Romans 1. And so somebody went and took these uh, abominations and, and destroyed them. And so now we can understand why they did that. That was a, that was a setup. Everything's a setup. Everything except the Bible is a big giant setup. So that's what what we got going down with that. Uh, yeah, let me see here. So right. So this is they they set up the problem, and then they go, well, this is how we're going to handle it, and. It wasn't a true, legit, born-again Christian that did anything to that idol. It was them. That's how that side works. They will manufacture whatever needs to be done and then have the solu their solution ready, that whole problem, reaction, their solution, that whole thing, uh, so that they can get their way in the end through manipulation, through evil, through pressuring you and say, well, we all need to unite together because these people, we assume they were mean, born-again Christians, I guess is the suggestion there. Uh, so that there cannot be uh, damage done to our idols. <laughs> what? Just insanity. Just total insanity. I love how Christ, everything he said and spoke and did was just straight out clear, right? He was uh, as a straight talker as they came, so to speak. You always knew where you stood with Christ and there was no confusion because God is not a God of confusion, and yet Satan is nothing but the God of confusion. And when I say the God, I mean the fake, fakey, fakington. Anyhow. At the same time, this plan is mindful that member states have the primary responsibility in protecting their population through their ter territories. So, you know, probably a lot more could be said about that. But I really want you to understand that there is this idea that if you are not part of this unity, you are a separatist. You are a terrorist. You're dangerous, you're mean, you're bad, you're selfish, and you're going to hurt someone. <laughs> and that is the way that they craft the narrative. I love that word narrative. It's the big giant lie. And in fact, you have a group of people that uh, are sweet little kittens, really, <laughs> you know, born again moms and dads and single people and children. And we're not looking to hurt anybody. And yet we are not looking to be sort of ramrodded into some 
uh, conglomerate of humanity worshiping spirits that are Lucifer. Lucifer, whether he's blue or green or purple or pink or, you know, Buddha or, uh, you know, Shiva or, you know, throw, throw out a false God, whatever. It doesn't matter. And see, this is the way that they do it. They're, 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 the noose is tightening. Do you understand that? The noose is tightening. So there's more to this article. We're going to end up doing a part two. Is this the thing or is this the thing? This to me looks like a podium. Uh, but they put it in concentric circles. But then what is this weird funkadocious thing back here? I don't know. The United Nations Alliance for Civilizations, Religions for Peace. <laughs> you got it. that that has to be worked into the title somehow. <laughs> uh tenth tenth. World Assembly Ring for Peace Ceremony. Oh, my goodness. 25 foot. Okay. Oh, my goodness. This is Laodicea at her finest, right? The, the church part of the fake Christians. And they're going to be matriculated in to the whore of Babylon. And God says that she makes him so ill that he barfs. And barfs her out into the tribulation. Anyhow, uh, thank you for joining with me. I think we're just going to go on to a part two. And we will revisit the words of Steve. And we will look and plumb the depths of what we can find out about this nightmare. And then, um, yeah, just be be watching out for more videos. Because we, we, need, we need to discuss this um, ID 2020 alliance. And what's happening with that and how some people are kind of starting to wig out in uncontrol and say, that's the mark of the beast. That's the mark of the beast. That is not the mark of the beast. But I would tell you that it's very threatening and very concerning. I would tell you that. So anyhow. Uh, oh, and uh, it would be really nice if uh, more people subbed and uh, if you want to and then uh, liked and shared the videos and whatnot. Uh, and I, I don't I don't know how much more time uh, we really have to beg the question. Are you watching for your window of opportunity when Christ uh, is going to fulfill one of these feasts of trumpets? Could it be this year? Absolutely. Am I saying it is this year? I don't know. Ask God. I don't know. But you better be watching for it, because as these things are taking a turn, it it he, at some point, Hebrews 10, 25 has to start informing you. I was just about ready to end this. And now I'm just. I'm going to say this last thing here. Whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, and I, I, I think it was uh, Paul, and we've talked about this many times, and we'll continue to do so here. We'll do the ducky one. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, talking about the body of Christ not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Don't you find that interesting that that's hidden there in scripture because you actually have churches closing right now? Not all of them, but some of them. And uh, my husband got in a fight with the pastor over this, but then also because they were promoting Francis Chan, who's a major nar ecumenical liar. And uh, the pastor wouldn't even be willing to look into the evidence that Francis Chan is ecumenical and with the Roman Catholic Church, which makes me think that's a change agent church. So we, uh, but anyhow, it doesn't matter now because they're closed, even though there's no mandate by the government to close them. They're like, hey, we're just going to run in fear anyhow. But anyhow, don't you find it interesting that this verse is buried in here? Because that really catches my eye. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here, but, you know, that we're specifically being told, do not forsake the assembling together of ourselves. And then you're like, well, in 2020, weird things happen where they close churches. Is the Holy Spirit like shaking a little red flag at you going, pay attention, pay attention. I don't know that that hmm, things that make you go, hmm. And he continues, as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And I told you that that day is capped in the uh, original Greek. They didn't do it. Hold on a second. I'll show you. 
it's it's judgment day. It's the day of Christ. It has a, a day one, and then there's the last day of it. So of the seven years, and and the King James they didn't cap it, which I think is a really mis big mistake. But um, sorry, what am I doing? Greek, but a Greek girl, but a Greek. And as you click on that, it, it is a regular 24 hour a day, but then you also find out as you get into the notes and everything uh, of the, the people that, you know, can read Greek and study this stuff, the experts and, and so on and so forth, that it actually um, is a day of judgment, a day of judgment, which is going to pair then with your Feast of Trumpets. And else it has lots of names like the day and hour no man knows and many other names. It's his wedding day. It's his coming. It's it's. It all ties in with Revelation 10, which is not in order. But I uh, just want to show you really quick here. See, they cap day. They cap that. Did you see that? And, you know, it appears that it's just, you know, a natural, you know, day, da, 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 because there can be that, that emphasis that it's just a regular day. But they capped it to show that it's not just a regular day. And... I'm kind of scrolling through here. Mm. The following phrases also have a reference to sacred or feast days. Yeah, feast, festival, uh, uh, appointed days, uh, feast of trumpets. Yes. And that's interesting. He says that you can exalt one day above another. Paul told us that you can esteem every day sacred. Uh, in Romans 14, 5, or just a particular day. And the Lord does have that particular day. You should be watching for that. And then, let me see here. <sighs> see, he follows the feast to execute his plan, and you're supposed to understand that. There you go. The day of, and I hate that J for one reason or another. If you say it, that's fine. But I, I prefer Yehovah if you're going to go that direction. But that's just my own little thing. So see, number three, look at that. Look at that. Of the, the lust day of the present age, the day, mm, the day in which Christ will return from heaven, raise the dead, and hold the final judgment. Okay, but see, there's a judgment that kicks it off. And then there's at the end of the tribulation, a judgment. So there's two, there's two judgment days. And that's why when you're reading, you might see the day of the Lord, and it's looking like it's the beginning of it, the front end of it. And then you'll be looking at other verses when you study it all out, and it'll it'll be the obvious end of it called the day of Christ. And you're like, which is which? It, it's both. And you have to surgically uh, divide those very well. And I don't know in the notes how well they do that, but the the day of the Lord, judgment day, he will exact terrible judgment upon his adversaries. And it is that that length of that seven years. There is a starting point to it. And yes, you need to understand the Bible through the Hebraic culture because it's not a Gentile pro uh, product. And so they kind of hint at it. I don't know that they understand it as well as they could, but that's uh, why I recommend Yom Hadin, why I recommend studying your feasts and I will try to put in links for, for some really good articles. Um, could that be elapsing? Could Christ be coming to claim his wife, his bride wife, uh, this year? He certainly could. And as we get closer, Hebrews 10 is going to really be informing you to pay attention as we see the day approaching. Day, day. So we leave and day one, it's on, right? You didn't want Christ. Now you're going to get the Antichrist. He's not going to be nice. So anyhow, a lot more could be said, but that day of judgment, that's a big deal. And you have in the Psalms, you have a lot uh, of, of emphasis for the day of judgment and peppered throughout um, the scriptures. Not a bad article here. I don't know if they get everything, but they they get more than most do. And I just 
adore. I adore that Hebrew. Yom Hadin, Day of Judgment. Anyhow, yeah, it's also called Rosh Hashanah, but I, I prefer uh, Yom Teruah or Feast of Trumpets. And, um, you know, God really does take into consideration who got into the one new mankind and who refused to. And so the mark of the beast is going to be for people that did not get into the one new mankind and they're going to be offered this technological transhumanist nightmare. And so your Catholic Church, Babylon Catholic Church, wants, wants to have this humanity 2.0. But I would tell you that you're being very short-sighted if you don't understand how Israel, Babylon, and, Is and uh, Nar Babylon also want to take you into this big giant lie as well. And much more could be said the pressuring of nations to come underneath the hand of Israel and her Hashem. So do join me for uh, part two, I guess. Thank you so much. Bye.